gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, that when I am dismissed as manager, people welcome me into their homes. So signing his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly, for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest and dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee, Lord Christ. Christ. concentrate your attention on the bare ascensions. So you'll live, really live. Let me repeat. Say, what? <laughs> Jesus didn't really say that, did he? Well, yes he did. Jesus has a remarkable knack for telling unforgettable stories, most of them parables, and they can cause us to mull them over and over. Sure, we've heard them countless times, but each time we hear them, we are at a different point in our life, and the story has a different effect. Immediately before the story in Luke is the much beloved story of the prodigal son, the cranky older brother, and the ridiculously forgiving father. Today's story is kind of like about a similar situation. Someone in trouble stumbles into grace practically by accident. In the story, though, of the prodigal son, 
The younger son makes some very selfish choices that offend nearly everyone and only comes to his senses when he realizes something must change so he can survive. Continuing to act in his own self-interest, he returns home to discover that grace and forgiveness have been waiting for him the whole time. And we have a sense that he may finally get what it means to be loved. In today's story, the dishonest manager is in an equally bad situation and for the same reason. He has acted entirely selfishly without concern for how his actions will affect others, just so he can slip some money into his pocket that doesn't belong to him. When his employer figures out what he has done, he figures his goose is cooked. And he continues, though, to act in his own self-interest by cutting deals with his employer's debtors. What he wants is for these people to owe him something, because he is sure that manual labor is beneath him, and begging is oh, so embarrassing. Now what's disturbing to those of us listening to his story is that it works. It works even better than he had planned. Not only do the people who owe money to his boss get a better deal, the manager himself has regained some status in the eyes of his employer because, employer because of his shrewdness. This is just plain, crazy, upside-down grace. We hear, we hear the story, and we want him to pay for his dishonesty, most likely. Not to get out of a tricky situation smelling like a rose. What kind of a moral example is this? Well, it isn't one. What Jesus seems to be highlighting in this story, which we can perhaps see more clearly by comparing it to the story of the prodigal son, is the incredible nature of God's grace and our call to live into that grace. Jesus commends the shrewd and shady manager as an example not for his dishonest dealings before, his clever solution. And Jesus doesn't stop there. He says to the manager, who is of this world, meaning someone whose motives and values are entirely self-oriented, has managed to scratch and claw his way into a better situation. What can't Jesus' followers do? He asks with the grace of God behind them. What Jesus thinks his followers are capable of is what he himself has been doing. Doing, healing, reconciling, truth-telling, proclaiming the kingdom. Yet we must be as clever as the manager in today's gospel with a different goal. Yes, maybe serving our own self-interest, but alongside the best interest in the world that God loves by building the kingdom of God. Today's call it contrasts being anxious about earthly things with loving things heavenly. Today's gospel is a reminder of a couple of things. When we get anxious, when we get anxious about money, status, powers, what letters come before or after our names, what kind of car we drive, what brand of clothes we wear. When we get anxious about those things, we end up using our best skills for ourselves alone. It's also a reminder that in spite of us, of ourselves, we are bathed in grace and forgiveness. We are called to be shrewd about grace and about recognizing it and about sharing it. We are called to love things heavenly, 
by loving God's creation, our neighbors, ourselves, and seeking justice for everyone. Perhaps most importantly, today's gospel is centered on one action, one action, forgiveness. The manager intends to make his own situation better when he forgives the master's debtors. But the more he thinks about it, the better it gets. The people have owed the master for more than they'll ever be able to replay. Hey, they can't afford it. And suddenly, their burden is lightened. And that's going to make the master look good, and that's going to make the master happy. And that means the manager won't lose his job. Everyone wins. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is an act, not a feeling, that has positive consequences for everyone. Forgiveness and its consequences might not be at first noticed in this gospel, but they are central to this gospel reading and the story of the prodigal son that precedes it. No matter who does the forgiving, it's going to create ever-widening circles of positive consequences. Forgiveness, Jesus seems to be saying, is the starting point for building the kingdom of God. And of course, this cycle begins with God's grace to us. If God kept score, oh, pray God not, we would be in some serious, serious debt, like the people who owe more than they could pay. But God's grace precedes our entire existence. And if we choose to be kingdom builders, we begin to do that by accepting God's grace and love and in extending our own forgiveness to others. There's really no other way to transform our limited sense of tit-for-tat justice into an expansive sense of God's justice and mercy. You know, the good news in today's gospel isn't immediately obvious. And maybe that's why that gospel is there. But that good news in today's gospel is forgiveness is the engine that drives our journey toward the kingdom. And we who receive it willingly are called to share it freely. Let us pray. God of infinite love, permit us who know your compassion to rejoice always in your forgiveness and graciously forgive others for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs>